All right, boys, we've got some major changes coming in Shadow Keep. Essentially, Titan Rally Barricades, as well as Warlock Rifts and Well of Radiance with something like Lunar Faction Boots, are receiving a complete rework. They no longer auto load your weapons. Instead, they're only going to increase the reload speed of your weapons, which really throws a wrench in our current DPS values. For many of our weapons now we can't really gauge what the best weapons would be until we're actually playing in that new sandbox and seeing what the reload speed will be when standing by a barricade or in a well what we do know for sure is that certain weapons that have been phased out of the meta are going to now be resurfacing and some surprisingly will be receiving a buff from this change so guys we're going to be counting down weapons we would recommend having for shadow keep so without further ado let's get started first up on this list i'm going to kind of go through some of the basic stuff as we don't really have values on these weapons but we do know that they're receiving a buff and that is scout rifles and pulse rifles now i kind of throw them in the same category as just a long range weapon because depending on the encounter having a well rolled scout or a well rolled pulse rifle can serve wonders for you scout rifles like night watch no feelings and on the pulse rifle side of things blast furnace bygones and of course outbreak perfected we're kind of just throwing out a number of different weapons and depending on the scenario having a good long range primary just in case can keep you in the ball fight during those long range engagements which takes us to the other side of things number nine man you just need a good hand cannon dude already this list is starting to sound terrible right but for my people that don't have a good rolled hand cannon especially for pve the curated kindle orchid is wonderful and it'll also pair really nicely with our weapon at the number one slot on this list that i can't give away but you probably already know what it is but also a very good weapon in that kinetic slot is spare rations or all stringer both can roll with a reload perk outlaw for all stringer rapid hit for spare rations and you can also get damage dealing perks on them as well rampage for all stringer and also rampage and multi kill clip for spare rations i have a multi kill clip spare rations it is extremely nice guys having the magazine size that spare ration already has pairs wonderfully well multi kill clip gives a ginormous buff there in damage inside of pve and it also allows you to throw other things on a minor spec maybe you want to rock a major spec little things like that to just include some extra damage now now that we got past just the generic stuff you know i just wanted to make sure you got a good short range weapon like a hand cannon of some sort and a good long range weapon and of course both of those being primary weapons let's get into the juicy stuff number eight swarm of the raven now i say swarm of the raven here it's actually going to be a toss-up between swarm and wendigo matter of fact since the change coming to tractor cannon swarm may not be the choice to choose over something like wendigo especially given the fact that wendigo rolls with something like auto loading holster allowing you in the middle of something like a damage phase to swap to another weapon get some damage in and then proceed to swap back to wendigo and the weapon be reloaded but honestly both of these weapons are still going to be very good in terms of damage having something like spike grenades present a swarm of the raven wendigo and its unique pinnacle perk explosive light which increases damage when picking up orbs of light i think some would say wendigo is probably easier to get as it's not so rng focused i actually have a swarm of the raven with spike grenades but also have one with auto loading holster but obviously if i was just going to sit down and main swarm throughout the entire damage dealing phase something like field prep to get that increase in reload speed while crouch especially when combined with whatever the reload speed is going to be inside of a well of radiance with lunar faction or a titan rally barricade it is possible we could be looking at like almost damn near instantaneous reload but really guys either one of those grenades launchers will do great for you and of course if you got something like an outrageous fortune nobody ever brings that one up i love it it's one of my favorite ones the only reason why i chose swarm over something like outrageous fortune was because of tractor cannon that benefit will no longer matter inside of shadow keep so again any aggressive frame grenade launcher or wendigo will serve you greatly next season moving on at number seven this is an old school choice but it's still a very good one and that is a trench barrel shotgun now you can either get the curated imperial decree from menagerie or the curated threat level from scourge of the past both of these are extremely good matter of fact i use threat level all the time and it is a phenomenal shotgun now originally i would say something like surrounded on threat level was the way to go especially when paired with something like surrounded spec not that that's not the way to go anymore the problem is is you're going to spend a lot of time reloading especially considering that you have to sit there and reload one bullet at a time trench barrel is still a fantastic option 
as it still gives you a 50% buff there for three shots after activating a melee. And of course, if you got the curated rolls here, getting a melee off on a trash ad will actually result in your weapon being reloaded with Grave Robber. A fantastic option, guys. Don't overlook it. I almost feel like some people have looked at Trench Barrel as like an old school perk or like a year one perk on Icolos, and then they kind of just forgot about it. But when it comes to dealing with majors, there really is no better perk, especially for increasing total damage. Moving on to number six, we have a sniper here, Soul Survivor. Now this sniper rifle comes from either Reckoning or from Gambit Prime. I've used this sniper a bunch inside of PVP. It's actually one of my favorite snipers for PVP. I love the scope on it. It's a very fluid sniper, but it also is a very good one for PVE, especially for damage dealing phases, as it rolls with the unique perk, Firing Line. Now Firing Line actually increases damage by 25% for simply being near teammates, which is what you're going to be doing in every DPS phase anyways. So just by having two or more allies next to you or within like 10 meters results in that extra increase there in precision damage. It's a fantastic trait, guys. As far as what the god roll would be on something like Soul Survivor, I would say either Firing Line, Triple Tap, Fourth Times the Charm, or Field Prep. And of course, some sort of magazine perk. Now, the magazine perks, it appears that Extended Mag, I believe it gets capped, guys. I don't believe it raises our magazine size up to six. I want to say it still caps out at five. The same as something like a Pendant Mag, minus the decrease there in reload speed. So I would argue and say just go with something like a Pendant Mag, Firing Line, and something like like four times a charm or triple tap. So you've got some ammo that's being thrown back into that chamber when landing precision hits. And of course, that's what you're going to be doing anyways to proc firing line. Overall, a fantastic sniper, guys. Definitely worth the grind. We have never even individually reviewed this one. Oh, my shame, man. I feel so bad. I need to just review it just to review it because it's definitely worth the review. All right, moving on. Number five on our list, 1,000 voices. Oh, you can't go wrong with this one, guys. This is the Last Wish Raid Exotic, and for the amount of damage that it does, it's actually got a big magazine size at four. The weapon honestly shouldn't be affected too much with auto reload going away, but as my friend Jay says, it's a great jack of all trade weapons. It's good for DPS, it's also fantastic for ad clear. So pretty much in every encounter, you really can't go wrong with 1,000 voices. No, it's not the best, but when you're just trying to make it to the damage phase and simultaneously do some good damage, 1,000 voices can carry you there. Now, RNG for these exotics, especially the raid exotics, is crazy. I know 1,000 voices got an increase in terms of RNG. I think it's like, what, 5% now? Regardless, I've got a friend that's, I don't know, done like 80-something clears and has yet to see 1,000 voices. The man's cursed! So I'm not trying to like bum you out or anything. I'm just saying, if you don't get it by the third or fourth try, just keep trying, boys. It will eventually drop for you. Moving on to number four, a one-two punch shotgun. This, this right here is so nasty. We actually review the build with Liar's Handshake, a one-two punch shotgun, and of course, Top Tree Arc Strider. And I got to see it firsthand how lethal that build can be. But even on other subclasses and by itself, having a good one-two punch shotgun is one of the best choices you can make for your loadout. Now, in terms of choices, you either have the curated Emperor's Courtesy, which you can receive from the raid and season of opulence crown of sorrow or you also have last man standing which you can receive from reckoning or from gambit prime and considering the increase in drop rates for both reckoning and gambit prime at this point it may actually be easier to just get last man standing with one two punch that's what i got now my pc account before i actually activated cross safe and picked up my console account again i did have the curated emperor's courtesy and yes it was nice either one of those will benefit you greatly the main benefit that you're going to get is of course the perk one two punch for that increase in melee damage and when combining it with something like Worm God Caress, Syntheseps, Winner's Guile, Liar's Handshake, all of those things stack with it, which increases that damage even more. Moving on to number three. This is a weapon that was actually king for a very long time, and that is Whisper of the Worm. Now, Whisper got a nerf to White Nail, where it would no longer regenerate ammo after landing three crits. Essentially, guys, you could just sit in the back with something like Whisper, and as long as you were hitting crits, you were pretty much set, as it would just regenerate indefinitely. Now, with the nerf and the removal of that, now it only pulls ammo from reserves, which in our current sandbox seemed kind of useless, as we had auto-loading from Luna Faction and Rally Barricades, that stuff didn't even matter. Lo and behold, with the Shadow Keep changes though, Whisper is going to return as a top tier weapon choice to have, as you'll never have to stop and reload as long as you're consistently landing crits. No, it doesn't indefinitely regenerate ammo, 
but it'll still allow for sustained damage over time. And I also highly advise having the catalyst for Whisper, as that includes box breathing. Moving on to number two, and this is a weapon I just recently got, Anarchy. This is an exotic grenade launcher from the Scourge of the Past raid. I've only been doing this raid now for like ever since it released back in December and just received my first Anarchy last week. Now, Anarchy by itself is not the most optimal DPS weapon in the game. No, the biggest benefit to something like Anarchy is that it does sustain damage and all you have to do is shoot two shots off into an enemy. Now, this is a weapon that can pair really well with pretty much anything and a lot of people for a long time are using it with something like mountaintop stick two grenades on an enemy allow it to keep chaining arc damage then swap to your mountaintop to do even more damage and as soon as it quits chaining arc damage swap back to anarchy and pump two more shots but it's also a fantastic weapon for ad clear especially if you're trying to zone off certain areas hands down this was my most desired exotic this year as having that increase in damage to be paired with any other weapon choice really opens up a lot of avenues for you. Pair with something like Soul Survivor, Rocket with the one-two punch shoddy, trench barrel shotguns, it opens up a lot of choices here. Now, to our number one spot, which is actually an exotic that's receiving a buff due to these changes, to Rally Barricade and Luna Faction, is Inagi's Burden. This is an exotic sniper found in our kinetic slots, which actually comes with the perk Honed Edge. Holding Reload consumes the magazine and loads around with additional range and damage. Now, it substantially increases that damage. But not only does it increase that damage, the catalyst itself, which just dropped not that long ago, also increases our honed edge damage. The only thing that was holding back Izanagi's burden was that reload speed, especially DPS phases that doesn't actually proc something like Outlaw. But with these changes, coming to Rally Barricade and Luna Faction, which increases the reload speed, actually results in Izanagi's burden, getting faster reload speeds, thus resulting in faster honed edge shots being ready, which which actually might result in Izanagi's Burden being the best DPS weapon in the game. It already currently has the highest total damage, actually beating something like Swarm of the Raven, even with two ammo reserve perks. Like I said though, the only thing that's been holding back Izanagi's Burden has been that reload speed. But we got a new meta on the way, boys. So those are our 10 weapons before Shadow Keep. We did something like this similar last year with Forsaken. I would say the Sandbox is going to be equally shaken up going into this next season. These are the weapons I would definitely recommend though for my damage dealing phases and just overall in pve let me know in the comments below if we missed anything guys one other weapon i didn't include was darcy i kind of left it off because i don't really know how reload speed and the changes are going to affect it next season i think one of the benefits of something like darcy currently is like the ability to just blow your load in like three seconds as the rate of fire on that sniper is super fast unfortunately you're gonna have to pause your load blowing reload continue pause again reload you see where i'm coming from so i would still put darcy as like an honorable mention but the rest of these weapons i would highly recommend in the next sandbox well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>